Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to SITS Talks. A lot of you already know about Cardboard Citizens, but I'll just give you a little brief rundown in case you are coming into this brand new. Um, Cardboard Citizens creates theatre, art and training with and for people who experience homelessness, poverty or inequity. Together, we explore and challenge the injustices that are most alive in our world and encourage people to empower themselves to make positive change in their own lives and in their communities. SITS was established as a theatre company in 1991. We deliver participatory art workshops from our HQ in Whitechapel Tower Hamlets. We tour co-created theatre activities and events across London and the UK by artists with lived experience. We aim to hold space for people with lived experience to voice their stories and create new art and theatre. We help people with lived experience gain skills for long-term progression and employment, bring together people with and without lived experience to develop a greater understanding of intersectional issues which lead to homelessness and poverty and help change public attitudes. We believe that art is a human right, that art is social change. So we kicked off these brand new events uh, programmes back in April to explore the themes of our work with the people who make it happen. We want to make space to offer regular opportunities to get closer to our work and explore the ways in which art makes social change. You'll hear from guest artists and creators making theatre and art, which is changing the conversation on social justice in this country. Talking with me, SITS Artistic Director Chris Sonix. Our first SITS talk event was at our HQ in Whitechapel live with Fawn writer Vinnie Heaven and director Debbie Hannon. So whether you're new to Cardboard Citizens or are already involved as a SITS member, supporter of our work or a friend to the company, welcome. In this SITS talk event, we're going to meet the newest members of our boards. Alongside our boards, we have uh, members reps who, um, who are voted in to be representatives of the members on the board. Um, Mary Sue was meant to be here today, but unfortunately she can't be. Um, but in the last year, we were delighted to announce the appointments of five new trustees to our boards, helping us to represent and speak to the diverse set of communities most affected by poverty and homelessness in this country. These appointments mark a major step forward for Cargo Citizens, following the introduction last spring of our renewed programme and expanded mission, exploring poverty and inequity as the underlying causes of homelessness. The new trustees, who are helping to steer SITS into its next chapter, um, our creative producer and playwright Marcus, who can't be here today, um, actress, award-winning voice artist and employment law solicitor Aisha, actor and writer Charlie, social impact advisor and director of curator community for Sofa Sounds, Ajit, and accountant for local government, Chris. I'm so pleased to introduce you all to these wonderful humans this evening for an insight into their journeys and what brought them to SITS. Becoming a trustee for an arts charity and what art and social justice means to them. So with all of that, there's quite a lot of me speaking, that will be the last of that. I'm just here now as a proxy to ask questions to, um, to the board. Um, so our first question um, is to open to anybody, please chime in whenever you want. Um, individually and together, you bring a wealth of experience, expertise and passions it would be great to hear a bit about you and the journey that led you to join us at Carbo Citizens as a trustee. That one I might just throw it at Chris first, maybe. Chris to Chris. Thanks very much, Chris. Yeah, so <clears throat> I had a period of homelessness myself. Uh, so, so my background when I was uh, a child or I guess a young adult, um, I, I went through the, the hostel system. So moved into short term hostels, medium term hostels around Shepherd's Bush and Croydon. So I kind of I come at it definitely much more from the homelessness and the inequality side, um, have a bit of a, an understanding of, of some of the challenges that are there and, and was was very lucky to to, to manage to get some opportunities to move out of hostels into, you know, into education and to, to get to where I am. So I think I, I sort of came from, from that point um, and, and always, always knew that it was something that, that I wanted to be able to help people that are in that position in the future. If, if there ever came an opportunity that, that, that I would, that I would love to get involved in that. Um, and an old colleague of mine reached out just a, a little bit over a year ago and, and told me about Cardboard Citizens and the work that he'd been doing as treasurer here um, and the, the work that everyone involved in Cardboard Citizens does to, to 
to understand and to to create empathy and to create a little bit more awareness and to provide opportunities for for people that are facing these kinds of issues um and i just thought that sounds like it, it's something that I, I definitely want to learn more about um so yeah i had a few conversations with him had a few conversations with Prue, came along to a board meeting and and literally every step of the way just everything that i heard about what what, what we're doing here is is something that maybe it drew me in and, and made me want to learn more about it and made me want to, to try and help help out I, and, and i so I'm the treasurer. Um, I come from a, a finance background. I'm an accountant. I work currently for the London Borough of Waltham Forest. So I have a sort of a public sector kind of finances experience. Um, and so I thought I'll be able to bring that to the role um, and, and learn a little bit more about, about art and about social justice and, and get involved with the charity. Thanks, Chris. Should we move along to the next volunteer? I'm going to have to choose, aren't I? That's what's yeah, going I don't, on. Yeah, I don't know if there's an order, really. So you might. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> G, would you? <laughs> no, I tried, like, starting away. No, uh, it's a real uh, pleasure to be here. And a uh, really massive thank you to, to the team for organising the event. And it's a real pleasure to meet all the members uh, here on this call. Um, so my name is Ajit. Uh, I currently work for a, a company called So Far Sounds. Um, and that's a music tech company where you buy a ticket you don't know where who you're going to see you don't know where it's going to happen uh, until about 48 hours before um it's an organization that's been running for about 13 years uh, and has now grown in over to over 400 cities around the world uh, and i have the real pleasure of being able to grow that in other parts of the world as well so where people can get a chance to experience music in a really intimate and creative way um in terms of my background and how my journey over to SITS, it really kind of falls in the kind of social advocacy uh, part uh, 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 theme. Uh, I kind of started my days as a youth campaigner um, in roles that were quite similar to the member, members reps, um, advocating for youth, youth services when I was uh, a young one. Don't look at the grey hairs too closely. Um, and uh, a part of my role uh, back in the day was really to just be advocating for better services around education, employment and training. Um, and really that kind of lit a fire and passion for advocating for social uh, social injustices. Um, but really as well, my passion has always been in the art and in the creative industries. Um, I never was disciplined enough to kind of be focused on one subject matter. So I figured I might as well be the person who helps and props up others instead. And I've had the real pleasure of working with an array of artists across multiple sectors from music to film to design to architecture. Uh, it's been a real pleasure being able to work with creative individuals and through that uh, creative communities um, and really socially driven creative communities. So those who are really positioning their art and their creativity to try and, uh, and achieve some form of social change. Um, I've had the real pleasure as well of working in the social investment sector as well and seeing what see what some of the things and uh, uh, changes are occurring there and uh, through that I just thought it came to a time where I've got all this years of experience uh, and insight and I really wanted to uh, to really provide give that to uh, uh, to another organization that um, that is doing some great stuff in the and again Chris came across cardboard citizens uh, through various different contacts um, and yeah, you know, had a few chats about joining the board and what potentially I could bring and um, and really offer to kind of help Cardboard Citizens and where they're at in, at the moment. Um, and really part of my role as a board member has really been to uh, explore where the organisation wants to go in the next few years and how they can do that in a sustainable way. Um, and working with figures like Chris as well in, in finding innovative ways in which the organisation can can adjust to these really challenging times and still continue to create the social change that it has been doing for um poor mass here but almost for 30 plus so um so yeah really excited to be part of the organization um i probably rambled on quite a bit there but uh but a real pleasure to be part of the team rambling is what it's all about really yeah. uh, <laughs> this is us all just rambling together uh, aisha Thank you, Chris. Um, just a big shout out to my mate Errol, who I've seen is on here. Um, he's my very good friend. Um, you know, like some things in life are just like, oh, it was just always going to sort of fall in this place. And that is definitely how I feel about cardboard citizens. It's kind of somehow always been in a certain part of my life. Um, 
so I sort of worked full time as a lawyer and that was my first career as an adult and then I uh, found my way to the arts and did some time at drama school and started my art career and was very much because I'd been in a legal life and very like linear life was never really able to let go of all that responsibility so I found myself very quickly in equity and um, suddenly leading a charity called the Act for Change project which was all about advocating for equality and diversity in the arts and that was an amazing movement but through that I and around that time I came across cardboard sips and have just um, found it one of the most inspirational and exciting theatre companies and charities so it's always been some like something that I've had a lot of respect for um, so it feels very natural that I've come here now with what I've learned and it's lovely to be part of something that's been around for so long and has achieved so much already under Adrian Jackson and now be part of this massive exciting chapter with someone so brilliant as yourself Chris Onyx and it's I'm especially excited to be joining at this particular time and this particular stage to see what's going to happen and what we can all offer as a lawyer I'm always someone who has quite a specific skill and I'm wanted on boards so I hope to be able to bring that with with me as well as uh, my experience in the arts and as far as how those blend that is basically my life I'm always looking at it through that lens of joining that creative and social justice ideals because that's just the world I operate in so yeah essentially that's me thank you well I'm sure we'll, we'll touch on it later but if anybody has doesn't know about the act for change and the, and the movement that that did you should look it up because it was great but I'm sure we'll, we'll we'll pick up at some point about about it last but not least is Charlie uh, yeah, hello, I'm Charlie Josephine. Um, I'm an actor and a writer. Uh, I make work for and about working class women and queer people. That's basically it. It's got really narrow. <laughs> that's all I sort of care about. Um, it's just because, yeah, that's my background and that's my passion. Um, I'm trans and I'm queer. And so I'm trying to give voice to people that maybe feel like they don't um have space in this weird industry that we work in uh, so yeah i'm definitely on more the creative side of things um been following chris around for a couple of years and uh share some of the frustrations that chris has with the theater industry um so trying to use brilliant art to wake people up to some of the um the changes that could happen socially basically like it, it sounds kind of cheesy but like I genuinely just really care and like believe in the power of storytelling like when it's good it's so good it's just that it's really good <laughs> so, <laughs> so like yeah I want to make really shit hot theater that like makes people go whoa and like maybe um makes people leave the theater a little bit kinder um, a little bit more awake to their surroundings and and the people that we share the planet with that's kind of what I'm about and uh, yeah um, it's a so everything that slots together there to work with cardboard citizens and I feel really honoured and grateful that I get this opportunity so yes yeah, nice to be here. Thank you Charlie if anybody's also interested in, in more of Ch Charlie's work we we just recently did a Raw Shakespeare Company podcast. Look at us two, two scumbags doing Raw Shakespeare Company uh, podcasts. I can't imagine that they would have our voices on it uh, 20 years ago, but there, there we are. Uh, but it was super nice. So if you, if yeah, check it out because there's more about that um, uh, yeah, on that podcast. But should we go to the next question with, with that in mind? Um, and this is open to everybody. Um, what does the relationship between art and social justice in the UK today mean to you? It's a broad old question. I'll jump in. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's such a tiny question there, Chris. <laughs> I read that and I was like, um, so I'm just going 
go. So uh, art and social justice. I I was think I'm thinking about like what are the principles of social justice, and the one that I want to hang my hat on for my view is participation. Um, to have social justice, that is a massive pillar of that is the ability to participate in society and have a voice in and in, and enjoy and just be part of how it's shaped. So art is a huge route because it allows us to explore so many different aspects of our life experience. And um, from the beginning of time, many politicians being some of the leading romantics in the canon from Coleridge to Wandsworth to Shelley, they're politicians, you know, so this link has always been there and actually it's through that blend that they had the most powerful voices because they had that stage. So it's about claiming that stage in order to effect um, change and participate. That's how I see it. Um, I see it, yeah, as, as I was saying, for, I just like it's one and the same, it's the same coin. Yeah, I will yeah. leave it there. <laughs> it's I great. To jump, sorry, I interrupted you. I can jump off the back of that, like um, a phrase that I heard recently is that culture changes culture. And it's one of them cute little quips, but it's like, there's a lot going on in there for me that makes me excited that the idea that the art that I see, the films that I watch, the books that I read, the conversations that I'm having, what's on the telly, that all influences how I see the world around me. And so, like, I've got an opportunity as an artist to really put my politics where my pen is and, like, open people up to stories that they wouldn't normally maybe get to see, um, which could then actually have a real-life impact, like, in their actual everyday-to-day life. Um, you know, we all grew up watching a lot of white, cis, straight, middle class, middle aged men on telly telling the stories that they had the, the microphone, as it were. Um, and that impacts like how we see each other in the world and this kind of hierarchy of like who gets a voice and who doesn't. And slowly things are changing there. Like a lot of other people are starting to get an opportunity to make work. I'm just really impatient for that change to happen a bit sooner. Um, because if I don't see myself reflected in any stories, then I kind of get a message that like, my story doesn't matter and like, that I don't matter. So I think like representation is a bit of a buzzword that can be sometimes used for like arts council applications, but it, like it's really vital for our mental health. Like I need to get that opportunity to have like empathy with a character um, and to like see myself reflected in stories. So yeah, I feel like art is is a tool for social change and um, again when it's good <laughs> and uh, and so often it's not so trying trying our best to make it good i think i don't jump off that though i think that even if it's bad it is still part of that social justice change because what you're seeing is people like you fail like if they give you the agency to go oh i don't like that but that's all right because because we are existing in that space do you know yeah like, yeah because there's there's like so much pressure put on certain people um, feeling like there's the only opportunity that they're going to get to make something so it has to be excellent but like there's a lot of terrible films <laughs> do you know what I mean there's a lot of terrible plays that like, there's a lot of terrible books so yeah like a simple solution is just like more that like, more stories told by people that haven't had the opportunity to um so yeah you're right to correct me on that like it, it we should be allowed to have space to make brilliant art and terrible art, <laughs> just like to make as much as possible. <laughs> you want to go, you want to go Chris? Yeah, sorry, can I, can I come in quickly and then I'll pass over to you. Um, so I was really interested in hearing what everyone else had to say about this because I'm I'm not an artist, and we've got people here who are fantastic in their in their fields and and have so much so much more experience and, and understanding. And I, I feel like I'm just starting to scratch the surface. Um, I was lucky enough to see bangers and to 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 see sort of firsthand the, the impact that really powerful emotional live drama can have and and, and how how that can 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 really affect your thinking and, and can tell a story like you were saying Charlie it, it does it does get a message out it does tell a story um so I, I guess there's that there's that side of it to me which is around 
providing insights and promoting empathy and kind of telling this story and getting people involved and, and communicating in a way that I, I just I didn't on before I got involved with Cobble Citizens I didn't really see so much um and I didn't really understand how powerful it, it can be um and it, and it really is in a way that words and pictures alone just just don't don't even come close and you were saying earlier Chris about talking on zoom versus being in a room and actually talking to people live and live theater versus television you know that there, there is just a fundamental difference um and I think I'm starting to understand that but but maybe not as not as much as some of the other people who are here on the panel so it's a journey and I'm, I'm still trying to sort of go forward the other side of it for me is the work that cardboard citizens do actually involves people who are suffering from inequalities who are facing these problems who are you know, been homeless um and so there's a huge um kind of a promotional aspect where it gives people a voice and it gives people a chance to get involved in something bigger and gain confidence and put you know things like the sits futures program actually develops skills and develops you know potentially a career and an opportunity um, as well so I don't know if that counts as being art for social social justice but that certainly for me that that's a big part of it is you know it's, it's providing these longer term skills yeah <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting those. I'm like, yeah, that's how yeah, I yeah. I mean, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> that's that's what that's what I think. It's quite a nice segue then um into sort of sort of my view as well um on where I see this sort of playing because sort of seen it in various different guises and uh and different spectrums. Um like primarily my background is from music and I think we've seen these moments happen before in the past of where you know creatives uh, and artists kind of come together to respond to social injustices that are occurring from the time it's what completely fueled the punk scene in the 80s and addressing sort of the inequalities that were occurring there and then simultaneously um, sort of uh, similarly right now what's going on right now um what I'm sort of seeing with with artists is that this really is a time for for women as well and women in music and particularly women of color in, in music um sort of in a post me too uh, era um, and I think it's just so encouraging to sort of see how things things are changing in response to that. But equally, I've also seen those communities really come together to really address a massive social uh, social inequalities. And um, I spent some time working for the British Council in their International Arts Department and was there right at the time when the Arab Spring happened as well and working with various different creative communities in different countries in that region. And all of them, despite those differences in whatever discipline they, they have, all really coming together to really fight a larger power that was greater than any of them. And I think that that's quite powerful as well to sort of see the spectrum of where it can go and not just in terms of people coming together just to fight that social injustice, but using their art and their creativity as a way to speak out. And that was also dangerous for, for a lot of people too. So working in those conditions as well um, is also something that, that kind of falls apart in, in some cases. I do feel like it's a really interesting time for us right now and actually in these moments, great art can sometimes be fueled by these moments of uh of, of real toughness and um and we're in that time and so i feel like charlie's point as well of just we need storytelling and we need and aisha's point as well of people need to participate are just so important at this moment in time because it will also be a moment for us to reflect upon in years to come to say yes that was great in terms of creative production but have we achieved the social inequality that we were talking about and be, let that be a warning for the future. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's an, it, another interesting thing about social justice being the being such a big idea, what you're talking about, Aisha, that that's such a big question, but actually the minutiae of what social justice is can be that moment of writing a character that happens to be trans in, in a play or, or doing a, a, a one day a week traineeship can change that one person's life uh go that is social justice but then we can also do the big you know we're gonna we're gonna do marches for black lives matter or, or the arrow spring and the, 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 it's such a big spectrum um that we we can only try and do as much as we can but sometimes we the little things are the ones that start the big seeds i think the big the big trees of 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 revolution if 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 we can do that and i think sits is always trying to do do that as much as it possibly can um don't don't sweat don't sweat the big things try to do the little things you know <laughs> um so uh da, 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 uh the next question is is what role do you think organizations like sits 
and of course the trustees can play in that change um, of social justice. I mean, I don't mind kicking it off. Um, to some extent, I mean, a sign of success would actually be that the organisation to some extent is no longer needed um, because we are living in a world where we have addressed these issues and no one is expecting it to be a utopia and that things will be completely 100% all right. Um, but social socially driven organisations ought to have a bit of that vision in mind that actually we're because we've, we've addressed what we what we were trying to address. But that doesn't go to say that what the role our, uh, cardboard citizens plays is really in nurturing and developing creative talent. Um, and I think that there's such a tremendous, uh, we're in a real famine of that right now in this of not enough being invested in, uh, in creative development and creative education. And actually cardboard citizens plays a massive role in being able to provide that as a, as a platform for, for people. Um, so I know that the kind of that feels a bit confusing in in sort of the, what the two can can possibly achieve, but I feel like the two do also work hand in hand as well in that you are also supporting and growing uh, an industry that really is desperate for uh, desperate for that, uh, that that investment and that uh, and that support, um, and then we're in the best position as well in ourselves through through harnessing that to address the social issues uh, even greater. And hopefully be one step closer to, to eradicating some of those those issues so i feel like that's the most important role that i feel that the organization can play and and hopefully can be a part of working you know, working towards that i love your mention of education energy i think that's so true and like getting back to grassroots uh, i love how cardboard places its members at the center and i think that keeps the whole concept of the work constantly alive and I think the role is to always respond to whatever is needed right now and keep him being a moving beast and as trustees our job is to help guide and support that and that is therefore very much although there is a governance element of it the heart of it is listening to be guided by the experience of those that the charity is here to serve. You know, Ajit mentioned the word support and that's really it. And that also means never putting too many labels, never really being massively prescriptive. It's always about a member-led, being a member-led organization. And our job is to be told what it is is needed and required and help get there in the in within the framework of the governance that we've been given within the society that we live so i'd say con keeping alive and keeping listening i'd say oh, yeah i absolutely agree um i i think from my point of view it's it's, it's to continue and to, to grow and to to give people that voice um and and do it more frequently and to wider audiences to, to continue with programs like sits futures um and create opportunities and and, and grow them and, and make make more opportunities i mean ajit was talking earlier about talking about sustainability and sustainable growth and potential opportunities i i, I very much see that that's 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 part of the journey over the next few years is is investigate these other opportunities and and and, and branch out and kind of broaden and use that as a base to continue doing what, what we do well um, but do it bigger and better and and, and more um and so yeah i think i think that's what what i what i really want to try and help to facilitate um yeah, over the next next few years yeah i don't really have anything to add to that other than just that um i think i think what couple citizens is doing is amazing and should just continue like whatever we can do to support that should just continue um i think sometimes there's a temptation for things to like spread wider and actually like uh just do it like quality over quantity do you know what i mean like um to just provide cardboard citizens with like more support so that like and more funding basically so that it can like continue doing what it's doing really well and like dig 
deeper and that continued doing is that long term connections with artists. That's what I'm most excited about, really, is like hearing from some of the members that like they were here for years and then they left for a bit and then they came back that there's like a long term like family feeling um what you don't get with so many other organizations that are like oh come and do a 12 week writing course with us or come and do a weekend of workshops and then that's it there's no like follow up afterwards um so so yeah i feel really passionately that like whatever it is that we've got to do to like um like deepen the connections then we should be doing that amazing one of the things um, that I think is is incredibly important to to talk about is being on a board and and what it what it actually consists of. For me, um, one of the biggest uh, achievements that um, we've we've done in the last sort of two years is to to get these new trustees here, um, these brilliant human beings, into the space and and to, and to to change up what what the previous trustee group looked like um and felt like and um had different opinions and different thoughts and, and diversity of thoughts and diversity of of backgrounds to to do that is a massive achievement i think um but often most people won't pay attention to it too much because i think the majority of the people in the world don't really understand what board members do <laughs> or what trustees are actually and what does it what does it mean um so with that in mind i wonder whether it would be good for us to to talk a little bit about that and if there's some people considering um whether it's something they might be interested in um it would might be useful to give a little bit of insight into this and 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 what would you say to anyone thinking about becoming a trustee, I guess? So there's a big couple of questions there is what the hell do you guys do <laughs> and why should other people do it? It's a lot of emails and Zooms in it, basically. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, for me, like I, I just feel like um, it's an opportunity for me to actually match my walk with my talk. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, I feel honoured to be given the opportunity to to like care about a company and and um, and to turn up and like share ideas and to be like these are the limited skills that I've got as a human and like and maybe some of them are vaguely useful um, and also like an opportunity to learn from people that like different skill sets and different life experiences and different jobs and. Um, and to, to learn from, from people that see the world completely differently, like whether that's through a legal lens or like a more like business minded lens or like, like I just sit and listen to you lot like, well, you're like, you, yeah, you're so clever and like you see the world really differently to how I see it, which is cool. Um, and, uh, and basically it's like um, a lot of meetings, uh, hopefully, um face to face over some pretty good food all sat around a table um making decisions together that can serve our bigger purpose which is like continuing to like allow this company to do what it does best um and then yeah also a lot of emails and zooms but if anyone's thinking of doing it 100 percent they should like i'm i'm very new to this but already i'm buzzing about it um and and learning loads um and it's like much less of a kind of time commitment than you would think it is. So if you're looking for somewhere to channel some passion and energy and um, and activism, then then you should definitely join a board. Uh, I'll jump in. I've probably got a slightly more pessimistic view of it. Like it, it is it's a leadership role and it is a lot of responsibility. And it, in my experience, it very much also depends on how well functioning the organization is. Um, historically, trustees are normally much older, perhaps retired people who've got the time and don't need the money to um, give up so much of their time. And some trustees put a lot in and some, some don't. So, you know, there's a spectrum of participation in that regard. 
I've been on the board of a, like a, a variety of organizations now and um I'm on a younger side of a classic trustee and um it's in it can be very intimidating if the setup isn't well organized like cardboard sits is one of the best that I've been part of to date but I've also been part of a setup of a board so that it, it, it's a lot to do it's reviewing of accounts it's being the final word the buck stops with you you are accountable to the government and the charities commission in respect of um, what the charity is doing and some um, organizations are charities as well as companies so you've got two kind of um, sets of rules that you have to abide by so it it is a, a knowledge base that's required in respect of legislation and it is a brave choice because of course you're working with your colleagues but you are you are accountable and your name is down as being accountable on the decisions that you're making um it's lovely to be in a if you're into it into a position of responsibility like it is a lovely thing and I do enjoy that and I enjoy being able to help at maybe times of crisis or like things like that so it's an opportunity to be a useful person um but it it can be it is a leadership role I would say so it is it can be intimidating for that reason um something else I wanted to say about it uh I guess it's team skills it's learning to work together and because although you are a trustee you're a board and you move as a board so it's an odd thing in that um you're gonna you've got to be united in the things that you make so it's a team skill that's needed um and you're an employer as well so there's that too so there's a sense of like being able to hold others and being responsible grown-up stuff um and yeah and I have found like sometimes it's too much time if you are and that's why I think trustees have usually been older I agree with Charlie it is also an amazing opportunity to learn and I've you know we've got an amazing chair here Prue who I'm already like love she's so chill and kind and that's just so nice to see a chair with those qualities um because it being a chair is so much about facilitating and supporting others so it's an incredible skill if you get to observe someone being a chair of a board and seeing what other trustees have to offer like charlie said so it's a great chance to just see people being dynamic but um, yeah, those are just some of the other things I'd say about it from my personal journey um, and probably why people end up doing it when they're a bit older um, to have that time and scope and life experience to bring all of that. But it's obviously brilliant. Everything should be diverse, age, gender, all of that. So it is important. I'm not saying boards should only be older. I'm just saying that's historically why I think it's been like that and you'll see in this country they're trying to mix it up a bit more so yeah i might i might potentially jump on the pro bandwagon a little bit because i do think like it is amazing to have a chair who is so open um and uh, and flexible with uh with you know what, what's going on um but i think for me what was also one of the um the draws to to coming to to become a trustee for couples it's also my first uh, trustee position and I'm in a similar uh, similar position as Aisha as well of sort of have seen boards before being predominantly this class the older uh, older age range and uh, you know it's interesting to sort of see our board where we do have that rich diversity and again this goes to the shout out to proof of being really able to manage and facilitate that diversity of thought that is around the table and that is kind of a key point that I want to draw on um, having worked in roles before where I've been you know advising founders for social enterprises on how to kind of build their boards diversity of thought was really kind of at the heart of what my advice was and so that was also part of the draw of trying to offer that for an organization too and Aisha's points are completely and utterly valid that it is quite a responsibility and something that did need 
some concern um, thought around the commitment that's being made and also in line to check that out as well with with work with family life as well and, and that kind of commitment but I think at the end of the day for, for me what's been really exciting is also working with Chris and with Lisa and with the rest of the team at Cardboard Citizens about sort of five to ten years time and like how can we provide with our expertise and insights and knowledge and networks help you get there um, and it's just been really interesting breaking some of those ambitions and those goals down and really then exploring okay well what might be the right route for the organization to take that and going for it being both you know honoring its origins and its roots and uh, retaining its values and everything that's core to what the organization is doing but also being open to being innovative um, and changing, uh, you know, maybe potentially being provocative as well uh, within the sector and maybe doing something quite at the heart of any organization right now, whether you're in the public sector, private sector, charity, whatever it may be, you're going to have to always be a little bit open-minded to where trends are moving and where the world is moving. Um, and I think this is where it's really interesting joining Cardboard Citizens because I see that openness and that willing to to kind of explore and and try and really we hope with member support as well you'll come along on that journey well, i'm not sure i like going last everyone's already answered the question really well and i've not got, <laughs> not got any points left to make um what's it like i, I mean i actually kind of I, there's quite a difference of opinion on on that you know how much time involvement there is and, and what it feels like I, I i guess i'm slightly towards this the, the end of you know it is a big commitment you know it does it does take up time but it's just incredibly interesting and rewarding and i've really immersed myself in trying to understand everything about cardboard citizens and, and that's a challenge because like you say you've got a job you've got a family you've got a limited time to to do things it's it's very different from a job where you're in your, an office and you're talking to your colleagues for 40 hours a week to, 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 to want to get the same level of understanding and provide that same kind of really useful input when you're only seeing people once a month or once every every quarter um so there's been a challenge there well, what does it involve yeah a lot of zoom meetings and a lot of in-person meetings and some pretty good food I, I agree those things are all definitely part of it um I, I'm the least new of all the trustees. So I've been with Cobb Citizens for nearly a year, I think now. Um, and because I'm treasurer, I also chair the finance committee. So there's probably a little bit more of a, of a time of commitment. I, I, I meet with Lisa on a monthly basis. And, and then, you know, I have the, the committee meetings and the board meetings. But I would I would absolutely echo what Charlie said. If you're if you're interested, if you want to get involved, jump in. It is it has been fantastic. It is you meet such a wide range of people with all these different perspectives and ideas and strengths and expertises. Um, the conversations are fascinating. The organisation is really really uh, interesting and, and doing doing really really good things. It's it's great to be a part of that. What's uh, what was nice about that question was that it opened up uh, everybody that's watching it into the into the real world of of why we have a board and have loads of different opinions but if it dealt with in, in, in a lovely way which sort of strengthened the whole argument of everybody which was which is when it's working well it's that's that's what you want um and that diversity of thought and understanding and and, and being in there in a, in a different way is uh de being there for for different reasons is is super important we are coming to the section of the uh, talk where we've got some submitted questions, but also you are more than welcome. I'll try to fit them in uh, to throw in some other questions onto the chat and that'll either go to me or Jess. And uh, Jess is live texting me right now. <laughs> so we're, we're super high tech over here in Carbo Citizens. Um, I'm going to throw out um this question um and i'm gonna i'm gonna do a little bit of an answer to it and then throw it if that's cool um but we had this question um as trustees how can you contribute to six missions of supporting members transition into paid employment and what one of my answers are there because i know that marcus would say this if if he was here um but marcus actually runs a company called the upsetters and um he um, had secured some funding to to also offer some sits future traineeships um, over over a performance that they had in Soho Theatre, which was 
which um, not to shout out Errol too much, but Errol was it was part of and and, um, and and a couple of other people that were in in this room, um, and that that was a paid that was a paid uh, um, uh, placement, and that was that was an incredible thing to kind of happen on the fly because Marcus was in a in a board meeting and we were talking about six futures and in that board meeting Marcus then threw out the opportunity to to be able to make that happen um but does anybody else have any answers um to that question that was uh, sent in I'll, I'll i'll say it again uh, as trustees how can you contribute to six missions of supporting members transition into paid employment There might not be an answer to this. I don't know. Yeah, I'm. I, I, I'm not sure. I. I mean, I've. I've already sort of banged on about six futures a couple of times, and I, I try and reinforce that at every opportunity. I. I really massively believe in that being a, a core good that we can do is allowing this transition into employment, allowing upskilling, allowing the development of, of of those kinds of things. So I, I guess that's probably one of the ways that I do it. But I don't know if there's. I mean, you, what you're doing as a trustee is you're strengthening the organisation generally, which then allows it to achieve those things. But I, I can't think of a much more direct way. Yeah, to jump on what Chris said there, there's like a fundamental thing about trustees that this phrase I've heard is like eyes on, fingers out. So like, because it's a governance position, so there's not always practical. It's not really about the practical things. That's what, you know, Chris and Lisa, that's like actually their job. So if we were meddling in that that would actually be inappropriate and blurring the lines so we are there to be like we could probe and ask questions so I guess we could be like what are you doing about that you know try and set some like goals or expectations and keep the conversation on the table so maybe that is as much as a practical thing I think just sort of the urgency and the discussion if if I could add to that um yeah, it's sort of speaking to what I mentioned earlier around remaining kind of open to trialing out new things. I mean, one of the things that uh, that you know certainly I could that I've been bringing to to the board and hopefully will continue to bring um, is just recognizing where there are quite some similar trends in the same issue in multiple different sectors. And you know that's the blessing of having a, a varied career that's kind of spanned various different sectors and sort of seeing what things are occurring in different places. Um, and sort of seeing how others are approaching it. And that is that something that Cardboard Citizen can potentially do here on this side, or are there other partners that are in other sectors or um, or within the same sector as well that we can kind of collaborate with? So again, part of being a part of the board is it's similar to what Aisha just mentioned is sort of just probe and sort of question, is this something that we can maybe explore and, and try and present that in some way? But that's probably the best position that we can be in is sort of, invite and and connect kind of uh chris and lisa and others to to sort of explore what others might be doing that could that could be brought here so just yeah. to jump in on what Ajit said, that is actually exactly it. it's contacts like board members are usually also picked because of who they are or connections that they might have or be able to bring and that's a, another big part about it it's like your job as a trustee is also those connections mm -hmm. that you can bring in and then those opportunities like the example Chris has just given of um, what Marcus has been able to do. Yeah, it's ma it's, ma it's it's it it also becomes slightly kismet in in different ways, and when we're meeting and when we're talking about particular situations that something might come up, and then there might be an opportunity that happens to be able to be thrown to to the membership in a, in a in a different way. But it but it's uh, yeah, I think the best thing that the for me anyway, the best thing that the board that does on that on that note is enable sits to continue doing what it does and backing it and, and supporting it and making sure that it's a, uh, a coherent company <laughs> so that so that we can do the thing and then we can enable you know people like jesse to do to do the work with rachel and 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 find those opportunities and so yeah it's a it's an interesting one of sometimes you go well these are everybody's got these contacts but you never know how much they're working because they're sort of it's it could take months in development for something to happen, but it could also just all be behind scene the scenes and and you might not see it. But it but I think it's a, a valid question, hundred percent. Um I've got some more, have I? I've got some more. Yeah. Uh 
sorry, the tech isn't working. Um, okay, this is a nice question. So what uh, what most excited you about being a part of Cardboard Citizens and what do you see in its future? <laughs> This is what you don't, this is the Zoom silence that I like. This is the moment where nobody knows whether they're going to answer because they don't want to be rude. But when you're in person, you, you're you absolutely more comfortable being rude with people. It's sort of <laughs> All right, I'll take it. Um, I, I'm just very romantic about SITS. I just, as I said, it's just, for me, it feels um, serendipitous to be involved in this way. So I'm just passionate about being part of something that, I really love and care about. Um, as far as its future is concerned, um, I like um, Chris's steer at the minute about thinking of it very much as a theatre and thinking of the power of the work. And I just see like dynamite plays and amazing collaborations and just brilliant work and cobbled citizens kind of being famous for the quality of the work that it's doing and that therefore being a launch pad and platform for all the members needs wants desires and everyone just having a great great time with that perfect um i think for, for me um it's like you mentioned what i mentioned before but i think any organization or any individual who is doing something that is around nurturing creative talent and fostering that and providing a platform to showcase it you 100,000% have my attention um, and I'm there for, there for it to, to, to do that, you know, uh, and whatever role I can play in supporting it, I will do. In terms of the future of it, I feel like that, it, like I mentioned before um, earlier, now is such a crucial time to be doing this and to be supporting particularly young people in their in expressing uh, in expression and storytelling um, to be able to have programs like what Couple Citizens is providing is so needed and warranted. And so what excites me a bit about the future is how we can do that um, in, a really, uh, in a really innovative and, uh, and sustainable way. The sector is changing. I don't believe anyone is under any illusions that it's, that it's not. Um, and we've got to move with that as well. We've got to change, go with the tides. And I think that that's what interests me a lot as well with how we take what Chris has set out um, and Lisa as well, positioning the organization and setting that up for success. Uh, I think like that's really what's gonna, gonna help us to be able to um, to grow and scale even further what, what, what we do um, and support even more people with that uh, creative expression and talent. So um, yeah, that, that's the thing that excites me the most. Yeah, I'm really excited about the creative collaborations that are gonna happen this year and next year. Um, I really want to see Chris, you direct some Shakespeare at some point. I'm gonna try and make, <laughs> gonna try and make that happen. Um, we're we're all in favour of that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just some like just like some big, ambitious, like really incredible theatre um, that makes people go, "Oh my god, who's this company? Why have I not heard of them?" And just feel totally ashamed that they've not supported Cobble Citizens before. I think that's kind of what I want to do. I think. Great Shakespeare it is then. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess what, what's exciting is the next thing, isn't it? It's the next, it's the next, the next play, the next, um, next project, the next thing that's coming up. Um, I mean, for for me as well, it's 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 the spreadsheets that we're developing and the management dashboard and the maybe a new treasury management policy that we're kind of talking about at the moment. But that's that's my finance kind of geeky, <laughs> exciting side. Um, the real yeah, the real thing is that is the the creative project, definitely. Yeah, I mean it 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 it's super important to 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 talk about that stuff that's underneath it the the, the spreadsheets and, the, and databases and and stuff that isn't showy i i'm super lucky i think in in my role is that i'm a as a, a artist it's a bit more rock and roll when everybody kind of gravitates to that thing but actually i can't do any of that if all of the stuff like the databases and the spreadsheets and and the, the budgeting isn't done um 
I, I don't exist, you know, and so I think it's a really important thing to just acknowledge and just to share, just to big up uh, yours and Lisa's work on all of that, actually. <laughs> Um, well, we're at the end, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it on a sort of joyful uh, moment. So, and I asked this wasn't on your uh, your pack, but uh, I'm just gonna throw you a curveball of a of a question uh, to answer in a sentence, which is um, in in the time of of art and theatres and music being taken out of schools, and now this sort of moment of the Tory government talking about not doing degrees that aren't useful uh to the economy or something nonsense um why is it do you think that art is so important one sentence <laughs> if you can answer it uh who should i pick on because nobody's gonna volunteer i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with the i'm gonna go with charlie on i'm that's what i'm gonna go <laughs> uh it's it's hard to do in one sentence um like yeah, like like you say so often, like it's a human right. It's it's vital for our mental health. Um, it, it makes us feel a part of, and it, it makes us feel alive. Uh, no one's no one should be taken that away from us. So, um, that's probably five sentences already. <laughs> Great. Who's up next? Oh no! Just just one sentence. I think art's the point. Everything else supports it, like you said. That you know, it kind of feeds into it, and, and you know, it, it's it's the thing that gives me. I'll try. Really try to do one sentence, but I couldn't. Sorry. No, <laughs> I thought you had it in there in a moment. I should have stopped. You could have just stopped it. You could have really done like a kind of like I've done. I've said something really apt, which you did. Uh, <laughs> um, who wants to go next? I'm afraid I can't probably narrow it down into one sentence because it's just it's just too important. I mean, we don't we don't live in a world where where art does not exist. It's all around us, like from the pavements that you walk to the cars that you drive to the clothes that you buy. Someone behind there would there was a creative mind behind it. And art helps you to express and develop that creative inquiry. And and, you know, that needs to be nurtured. And it really, really annoys me when. We do have our governments, you know, completely praising and supporting like when someone like Adele wins a Grammy or a British actor has won an Oscar. But you don't think about everything that went behind that and how that person got to that stage. And you're not if you're not nurturing it. Uh, it does not happen. And so I feel like there's there's a whole trajectory there. I will get off my soapbox, but it is so important because it's everywhere and you can't live without it. So you might as well. Put, put your money where your mouth is and invest. Great. Good soapbox. <laughs> okay. Well, comma, aren't you alive? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> you went for the letter of the law there. Fantastic. Uh, well, <laughs> should we get those on tea towels and start selling them or something? Is that is that a fundraising technique? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, thank you, uh, everyone, for being part of this chat. Um, we're coming to the end now. Um, thank you for anybody that sent in questions and thank you for tuning in on this um, conversation. Please try and be around when when everybody's around and we can meet in person. It's always always a nice thing for. For us not to be completely segregated in in just board meetings and every so often seeing each other so um it's, it's been lovely to to see the board members and, and chat um about what they do uh and then we'll i'll see you next week uh, <laughs> but for everybody else um uh we'll see we'll see you soon and 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 keep an eye out for the next sits talk um massive round of applause virtually um to, to to the guys here thank you so much for joining into sits talk that's it thank you all and thank you very much for thank you. Good night everyone stay well thank you everyone Bye.